Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take a Little League ballpark and bring it into my studio. All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Matt Hernandez and today, like I said, I'm gonna take some Little League pictures inside the studio. This actually started a whole lot different than, than, than what it turned out to be. I intended it for, be, to, for it to be a simple setup, like one or two lights, well, I guess at least two. But my goal was to get the Westcott Pro Light Mods that James Quantz created about a year ago. These little covers that go over soft boxes to make them look like stadium lights. It's a really cool product and a lot of people are, are, are buying them. It's getting really popular for good reason because they work great. Just like advertiser, it minimizes your retouching. So it's, they're really cool for sports pictures. I always try to be creative and think and try to think differently so that I can do different type of stuff with them. Well, not with those necessarily, but with everything. So with those in particular, a lot of people use them pretty close to the subject, like, I don't know, a few feet behind them maybe. I've used them like that. You spray fog in front of them and, it, and the atmosphere, or you can have a fog machine or a haze machine like we have today, that, the, uh, that will create atmosphere between the light and the subject, which is gonna make some flare, and the smoke looks really cool. So they, they, they look good without that, but not nearly as good. That's, that's kind of the key. But I've been putting stadium lights behind athletes for years, taking pictures of them, and I thought, well, what if we, instead of having them right behind the subject, what if we backed them up as far as we could and make them look smaller, maybe shoot a little bit more shallow, and that way it would look, make it look like more realistic, like a real stadium light. So if you think about it, when you take a picture at night, especially with strobes, the background's gonna be dark. You're gonna see, the, if the lights are on, you're gonna see them on, and it'll just be the light. So this really, that's what it, that was my goal, was to replicate that. So I wanted to take a really tight, gritty picture of my two boys who both play baseball. We've done another video with them recently on underexposing the sky, and I'll link that down below so everybody can watch that too if, you, if you're interested. Okay, so, the goal here is to put the, the light mods back in the studio as far as possible. I want to underexpose so that I get the background to be dark, which can, is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because we have some dark gray walls, but we also have this big wall back here is white. So that's gonna, that can bounce light. So I've gotta be careful how I light this. And like I said, it started out to be maybe one mod and then a light and, a, and, and one main light. It didn't end up that way. I ended up actually using eight lights. So I know that's excessive, I know it's a lot, it really ended up looking cool, which you'll see here in a minute, but, and I understand that people want videos on, on easier setups with less gear because not everybody can afford eight lights, but and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna build it from the background up just so you can see it is possible to do with less than this, and it's possible to do outside at night, it doesn't have to be in the studio. I just thought it would be cool to do it in here. I actually got some turf, um, it's Sam's. I've wanted turf for a while, for several years, finally went and got some. It was like $300 for two, I think seven by eight foot pieces that we have laid together here. So I'm gonna do some, maybe with them sitting on a bucket too, so we can get the grass. And it should fade down to black and then you should just see the mods behind them, hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the setup real quick and then I'm gonna shoot and show you the results. So it started, like I said, with the backlights to emulate the, the, sta the stadium lights in the background. We got the a Westcott fabric, nine by 20 collapsible background back there with background stands. Then we have the turf and we've got, I think it's about 16 feet of difference between where the background is and the mods and then where I'm gonna have my subjects. I've got the Westcott Flexi Gels, the blue ones on the, the mods back there. You can see a little bit of a blue tint. And then I've got, these are all, these are all FJ 400s except for I've got two FJ 200s. So those are both 400s. These two lights here are 400s. I have these here to, because those are so far back and they're angled in, they're not gonna be as powerful, so they may not edge light my subject as much because I'm gonna have to shoot at a higher shutter speed to get it dark in here. So they may not reach and actually become edge lights, which the mods will do if they're closer. So I've got these other two FJ 400s right here, and these don't have anything but the, the I think it's a seven inch reflector that comes on it, and I've got a blue gel tape at the front of both of them, and I've got them angled about 45 degrees in. Now this is to pick up the atmosphere, and, and it's gonna, so it's gonna get some flare, blue flare, which is what I want. So I have all four lights gelled blue. And then the, the flexi gels aren't gonna be quite as, quite as blue as these, but that's okay. These are gonna act like, they're gonna mimic those. So it's the eye's gonna look, it's gonna look to the eye like that's what, where the light's coming from. And from other lights like in the stadium. Okay, so the, the cool part here that's gonna help sell it, I believe, is the two by three mods that I have on each side. These are, these are FJ 200s and I have those turned up all the way. Those back there are at eight at a, at a nine. These, are, these two right here are at nine out of nine, and these 200s are at nine out of nine, which is the same thing as eight out of nine on the 400s. 
So I have two by three mods here and I've got them angled down a little bit, probably about 45 degrees again. And I've got them right beside, my subject's gonna stand right here in the middle of the mods. So I'm gonna have them wear their batting helmets. And what that's gonna do is give the reflection of the stadium lights on the side of the helmet, which is gonna help sell that it's actually outside at a ballpark. They might be a little bit bigger. We may have to scoot them back a little bit. We wanna make sure that they're bright enough. That's why I've got them close. And then, which we could use 400s and turn it up a stop, but I think that this will work. Up front, we've got a, the key light FJ400 again, and it's on a power of seven and a half out of nine. I've got, it's got a deep focus reflector, which is a high output. I usually don't use that for portraits, but I wanted this to be a little bit more gritty. So I've got the diffusion on the front that comes with it. And then below I have another 400, and this one is turned way down to a power of one out of nine. So it's down as far as it'll go. It's also got the diffusion, another deep focus reflector. I'm shooting with the, the A7R5, the 24 to 70 2.8. And then I actually have a three stop, a, a breakthrough photography, three stop neutral density filter. And then on top of that to darken it down because I wanted to shoot shallow to blur those lights out in the back. So in order to shoot at 2.8, I didn't want my shutter speed to be super, super high because you get some banding with that whenever you shoot high speed sync. So I want to minimize that. So I put a three stop neutral density filter, breakthrough photography. I've got videos on neutral density filters, or I've got a video on neutral density filters also. If I'll link to that down below too, so you can see that, the difference between that and high speed sync. So today we're, we're going to use both actually. This is, a, this is a, one of the rare instances that I would use both. I get asked all the time the difference. So if you want to know the difference, look at that, watch that video. Okay, on top of the neutral density filter we have, which is basically like sunglasses for the camera, it's going to darken at three stops. So my shutter speed would be three stops higher. So I've got that on. And then on top of that, I have a Tiffin 82 millimeter black pro mist filter, which is gonna make all the lights glow a little bit more. So it's gonna add even, even more atmosphere to what we have going on with the Haze machine. So A7R5, like I said, I told you the lens, and then I've got the FJ, or the, uh, the FJ X3S for Sony remote on here so I can control all my lights from the camera. We're tethering, I've got a tether tools cable. To, I'm on a tripod, we're tethering to my computer so that you guys can see I can see what I'm doing as I'm taking the pictures which I do in the studio a lot just so that my client can see what I'm doing it helps me too just to make sure the exposure right and all that good stuff they come out edited so it's, it's a lot faster to, to shoot like this so okay I'm gonna I'm gonna start I'm gonna turn these on one by one and take a shot of each one just so I can show you they're already on I'm gonna take a shot with each one from the back up because that's how I always t tell people to, to light from the back up it's easier to get your lights dialed in correctly that way much faster so, so I'm going to do that and show each image and then we'll show the final and then I'll shoot a little bit and get a few different poses. Okay, so I've got the modeling lights turned on just so that the camera can see me. Uh, I don't want it to be too, bar too dark in here. And I've got the lights turned off because again, I don't want to light the, the background there. So I'm going to take an ambient shot first. So I'm going to turn all these off and you probably won't see me while I'm doing it. Okay, all right. So I'm at 1 1600th F2.8 ISO 100 flash white balance. All right, look right at me, bud. Okay, so it's totally black. That's exactly what we want. All right, so I'm gonna start in the back first. We're gonna turn those mods on in the back. Okay, ready? So I've got the modeling lights on so we can see what it's gonna look like. Um, there's no edge light hitting him. I can just see him in the background. So that tells me that these other blue lights on the edges here are really gonna help. All right, look at me. So it's really even hard for my camera to stay still, please don't move. It's hard for my camera to even focus at all. I'm gonna have to go to manual mode. Look at me. Because it's too dark. All right, ready? Okay, good, all right. So that's good, background's black. The lights are bright enough. I don't want them to be too bright and overpowering. So that looks exactly how I want them to. They're at a power of eight out of nine. All right, so now we're gonna turn. I've got these all on different groups. I'm at channel 11, those are on group E. So we're gonna turn our second bank on group D, and I've got those at full power. All right, ready? We'll go back to autofocus and see if it can handle it. It can't just yet. All right, there we go, it barely made it. All right, ready, here we go. Oh, don't move. Nice, that looks exactly how I want it to. So the, the haze machine is, is putting atmosphere in the air, which that looks really cool, honestly, by itself. So we've got these lights on the edges that are aimed towards the camera. Anytime you aim light towards the camera, you're gonna get flare, which is what these are doing. They're just out of frame. So it's adding flare to the edges, which looks really cool with the haze. And then there's the mods in the background, nice and blurred out, just like stadium lights would be if I was shooting at a shallow depth of field outside you know, at night. 
or even during the day, 2.8, okay? So that looks good. So those are mimicking these edge lights as practical lighting. These are giving the illusion that the back lights are lighting him, okay? So now let's turn on. I'm gonna turn these mods on the edges on last because that's kind of like an extra thing. All right, ready? Relax your eyes. There we go, good. All right, that's on seven and a half. I'm gonna have to change that battery soon. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my fill light on down here and I may not end up using this. Pull your head out, there you go, good. Okay, so, all right, pull your head out and don't move. I'm gonna take, I need to take one with the fill light and one without, freeze, like a statue. Okay, don't move. So I've got it at one out of 10. So you can see there's without it and there's with it. I think I'm gonna leave it, I, was, I wasn't sure. Okay, it's not adding a whole lot, but it is a little bit, okay. Um, so we've got glycerin, half glycerin, half water, and we put it in a spray bottle and squirt it into their faces just to make it look more gritty. Okay, now let's turn the side mods on. Okay. Do, do two, that's fine. All right, look tough. Squint your eyes, look, just a little bit like that. There you go, yeah, that's perfect. Nope. <laughs> that's a good smile. All right, be still. All right, look tough. Pull your head out just a little bit, bud. Just a little bit. All right, there you go, chin down. Just a little bit less squint. Look at me, look at me. Good, okay, good. Okay, so you see the mods are lighting the side of the helmet. So there's, there's without, you can see that the helmet's plain, which that still looks great. But then with the mods on, you've got, especially that one where the, I've got the light, the key light down low enough to where the bill's gonna cut it off right there so it's not gonna reflect as much. So you can see the mods on the side there. Yeah, that looks really cool. Good job, buddy. I know that you're not tough, but you look like it in the picture. That's not true. <laughs> okay, so if you zoom in, you can see how gritty that looks. We got that gl glycerin's making his skin shine really well, and, and it looks like he's sweaty a little bit. That's exactly what we wanted. All right. Okay, so I moved the setup a little bit. We're, before we were a couple steps in front of this, I moved all the lights over or down a little bit and I put them on the edge of the turf because I want I wanted to shoot vertical now and try to get the turf in it so it looks like they're actually on a field. We got rid of the uh, fill light below because I've got to be down here and then <clears throat> everything else is pretty much the same. So I'm gonna start shooting now. All right, bud. All right, here we go. Ready? Sit up tall, chest up. That boy, good. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Pull your chin down a little bit and keep your head out. There you go. Nice. All right, that does it. Like I said, that got a little bit more complicated than I thought with adding all the extra lights in. This could definitely be done with just, well, really just one light. Now you're not gonna get the background, which is kind of the point of the video. So adding the mods in at least one, so you could have one in the background and then a main light, and it would still look really cool. Adding the edge lights and the haze machine and, and the gels, that adds all adds to it, makes it look even cooler with the atmosphere, but it can be done with less gear if you want it to. So we wanted to do the ending here just so you can see everything with the lights on to get a better understanding of the setup if you couldn't whenever the lights were out. So this could be done probably in a garage or in any indoor space, honestly, it doesn't have to be in a studio. So just to let you know what you can do whenever you wanna get creative. So I'd appreciate a like, subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so that you know whenever I post new videos, there's gonna be a lot more content to come, and I'll see you next time.